Hi, welcome to Discovery Quests. I hope you all are doing great today. American crocodiles are spreading north in Florida. On a canal bank lined with palm trees off the Banana River in Satellite Beach, Florida in October, a 10-foot-long American crocodile basked in the midday sun. Its toothy jaws opening as neighbors looked on from their docks the reptile had become. The subject of gossip and local news because until this year, most residents in the coastal communities east of Orlando had never seen one. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, some were frightened more. Were curious, nonetheless, the commission decided it was in. Everyone's best interest to intervene, state trappers wrangled the male crocodile taped his jaws shut and loaded him into a transport vehicle bound for southern Florida, where he was released. American crocodiles typically live in the mangrove estuaries in and around the Everglades a good 200 miles from Banana River. Although the historic range of American crocodiles reaches up Florida's coasts as far as the Canaveral National Seashore northeast of Orlando, Massive habitat loss had virtually eliminated the species from the north but over the past few years. Verified sightings of American crocodiles north of the Everglades have climbed, and experts believe the reptiles may be reclaiming at least some of their homeland. Though no one knows how many crocodiles live in northern Florida, the increase in sightings suggest the animals will begin breeding soon. Florida is the only place in the world where alligators and crocodiles coexist in the wild. American crocodiles reach about 15 feet in length, while the average American alligator seldom exceeds 10 feet. The best way to tell the species apart is by the shape of their snouts. Alligators have a rounder appearance, while crocodiles' noses narrow to a point, like their smaller alligator cousins. The American crocodile was declared endangered in the 1970s by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, thanks to mangrove forest conservation. Their numbers have risen dramatically from an estimated all-time low of around 152, around 2,000 individuals in the state of Florida. While the International Union for Conservation of Nature lists the American crocodile as vulnerable overall, the FWS downlisted the species in Florida only two threatened in 2007. It's an endangered species. Success story, says Frank Matsodi, an ecology professor and American crocodile expert at the University of Florida. The species' return is positive, especially because the apex predators are vital to the coastal wetlands. Helping keep prey animals in check, he says. They're also not a threat to people due to the American crocodile's shy and reclusive nature. Conflicts between them and people are extremely rare in Florida, with only one non-fatal bite incident. Ever having been documented, says Lauren Clairbout, a spokesperson for the State Wildlife Commission, more mangroves, more crocs just like American alligators. American crocodile populations in Florida took a downturn largely due to habitat destruction. Roads and dikes staunched and diverted the Everglades' natural southward flow, rendering many downstream habitats inhospitable. These habitat changes have posed a bigger problem for crocodiles than for their hardier relatives. While alligators have made themselves at home in just about any water body in Florida, including swimming pools, crocodiles are not as flexible and need mangrove forests to thrive, though once the dominant coastal habitat in southern Florida. Many mangrove forests have been destroyed by construction and hurricane activity supercharged by climate change. Many Floridian coastal estuaries have lost as much as 60% of their mangrove forest cover in the past century, for instance, Everglades National Park and Florida Bay to the park south still experience disrupted flows, which is why crocodiles are scarce there, according to data collected by CrocDocs, a multidisciplinary team at the University of Florida, instead. Their data indicates that the reptiles are flourishing in habitats outside the Everglades region, such as protected areas around Biscayne Bay south of Miami and Crocodile Lake National Wildlife. Refuge on Key Largo, they're doing so well, in fact. 
That the animals are setting off for new territories, it's the same thing as with a human. Population, says Matsodi. When you have a healthy population of animals, they have to find more areas to occupy. And these crocodiles are moving up the coast in response to that. A large-scale effort to safeguard mangrove wetlands, particularly as state and federal protected areas, has boosted the species' numbers in 1996. Florida enacted a law that bans direct human damage to mangroves. And various state agencies and volunteer organizations have replanted mangrove forests. Over the years, Florida's alligator population, which is widespread across the state, has also benefited from such initiatives in recent decades. The reptile's population has skyrocketed into the millions, hurtling from Peril Strait into the status of nuisance animal that often shares space with. Human neighbors, even so, alligators bite an average of eight people a year, making them far less dangerous than bees, according to the state commission. State-licensed trappers like the ones who nabbed the satellite beach croc capture and euthanize millions of alligators per year, which is not slow their population growth. Moving on up American crocodiles are also following mangrove forests north as the Atlantic Ocean heats up due to climate change. South Florida waters have warmed about 1.5 Fahrenheit in the past century, the rising. Temperatures are nurturing mangroves expansion in two. Areas such as the Indian River Lagoon, which is part of the Banana River, says Matsodi. Many other species of flora and fauna will join them in their progression north, such as native snookfish and introduced species such as Burmese pythons and Cuban tree frogs. That's it for today. We will meet with another interesting topic very soon.